In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can take a transformer, which is rated for around 115, 120 volt input, and use it with 220, 240 volts. Sometimes you may need a step-down transformer if you're working with a two-wire, 240 volt power supply, but all you happen to have laying around is a 120 volt input transformer. Now the information I'm giving you here is going to be for transformers that aren't too big. I would say rated 2 amps or less. You shouldn't have any problems because I have done this for transformers rated at 1 amp output and even a little higher. The one I'm going to be showing you on has a 350 milliamp output. The first thing I want to do is get an idea of how much current this transformer draws with 120 volt supply. Now this is the load that I would be using. This is around a quarter of an amp, this bulb. Let me connect it up to the secondary. Turn on my DMM. I have a 120 volt power supply I'll be plugging into the receptacle and it's fused with a 200 milliamp fuse for safety. Let me take the neutral of my power supply coming in. Connect that here. Let me put some electric tape on this to prevent it from accidentally touching and shorting. Cover it up. All right. You plug in the power. So right now we're running on 120 volts with the 120 volt transformer. Output, let me lower it out to 20. around 11.18. I want to measure how much current is going into this transformer for the intended load. So let me disconnect that. All right, so we're drawing around 28, 29 milliamps. So with this load, it's 11.2 volts. It's around a quarter of an amp, that bulb that it draws. I'm drawing 30 milliamps or close to it on the AC input. So what I'm going to do now, disconnect this, show you how you can use this with 240 going into this right here instead of 120. It's very simple to do. Keep the fuse connected. Off to the side. Hook up my 240 volt supply right now. Just give me one minute. All right, I now have 240 volts ready to go. In order to do this, what you have to do is you're going to have to take a capacitor. Now the capacitor type that you should use should be a type X. Doesn't have to be, but type X is usually the way to go because type X capacitors are designed in such a way that if they fail, they shouldn't go short. If they go short, you're going to have full current going through here and that could be a problem. So if you know this transformer draws 30 milliamps, then you want to definitely make sure when you do this that you have a fuse. This one here is a 200, 200 milliamps. In the event that this does go short, nothing will happen because this fuse will blow, protecting the transformer. You also want to make sure that the capacitor that you use is rated no less than 400 volts. When you're dealing with 230, 240 volts, the peak voltage is around 340, 350 volts just like the peak voltage of a 120 volt line is around 170. So make sure the voltage of the capacitor is right. If it isn't, it will overheat, it'll probably explode, and it might even go short. Then hopefully you do have your fuse in place. For this transformer here, I required around 0.27 microfarads. I didn't have a 400 volt rated capacitor, but what I did have was two 250 volt rated capacitors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place both of these in series so now they can handle 500 volts and the rating of 0.56 will be cut in half so it'll be around 0.28 microfarads. I'm going to take one line leave that connected to one 120 volt leg right there with the fuse. The other leg 
is going to be connected to one capacitor. Take the other side of the capacitor, connect this one. All right, got those. Going to take this side of this capacitor right here. All right, so these are in series, these two. This goes to the other 120 volt leg. Now you could have a 230 volt leg with a neutral, or you can have 120 and 120. In my case, it's 120 and 120. So I'm going to connect this now to the other 120 volt leg, so I have 240 going into the circuit. I'll also show you the voltage reading between here and the fuse to show you I have 240 going in. All right, let me get this ready. All right, I'm powered up using 240 volts. You see it's working perfectly. Let's do a voltage reading here. Let me put that on the 1000 setting. I'm going to go between here and the fuse. There's my 240 right there. So you know there's 240 going in. Now the reason why this works is because when you use a capacitor in series with an alternating current line, the capacitor acts like a resistor. The only difference is the capacitor does not generate heat like a resistor. The higher the frequency that's being used, more current will be allowed to flow across the capacitor at the given capacitance. The lower the frequency, you will have less current flowing through the capacitor. It's very simple. Now what I did to figure this out, there are formulas out there. You can go online. They have capacitive reactance calculators, online calculators. But what I did is I just started with a very low value capacitor. I started with a 0.22 microfarad. I noticed the voltage on the output was still too low. So what I did is I went a little higher, I went up to 0.28, and then the voltage was just right. If you're going to be using a larger transformer than 350 milliamps, if you're going to be using a 1 amp output transformer, then more than likely you're going to be using a capacitance of around 0.68 to 1 microfarad. So you're going to have to experiment with different values until you get the output just right. Let me take a look at the output voltage and then I want to take a look at how much current is flowing into the transformer. Now the transformer will run just as warm as it would using 120 volts. There's not any difference there. Let me take a voltage reading on the output here now. Slightly higher, 11.9. What I'm now going to do is turn off the power and connect the meter in series with the power supply at 240 to see what kind of current is going into this transformer. It should be right around 30 milliamps. Let me unplug for a minute. Let me turn it on again. You're going to see the actual current that's going into this transformer using the 240 volt power supply. And look at that, pretty darn close. Drawing right around 30 milliamps using 240 volts to power the 120 volt transformer. Now the only issue is when there's no load on the output, the output voltage is higher than it would be using 120. So if it was only 12 or 13 volts with no load at 120, it might run 19 or 20 volts with the load not connected using 240. So let me just show you that. Let me turn the power off again to disconnect the current reading. Let me power it back up. All right, so the voltage is right around 12, great. If you take off one leg, you're going to see it's going to cl climb higher, which is usually normal. I mean, there's no load connected, so it's going to go up. 18, 18 volts, all right? Now, if I check the same way, using 120, it only stays around 12, 12 and a half without the load. But it really doesn't matter because when you have power supplied to the transformer, it's usually always on, connected to a circuit. And 
The circuit could have a voltage regulator on it, so it really doesn't make any difference. I, I've never had any issues having a slightly higher no load voltage. It doesn't get easier than this, so just take notice of what your input current is at 120 volts. Once you know what it is, you can regulate how much current goes in using 240. I like to measure the output voltage and just gradually increase starting with a low value capacitor until I have the voltage where I need it. Do not forget to have the overcurrent protection. It is very important in case something happens with these capacitors and they go short. You do not want to have excessive current going through the transformer. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.